Incredibility counts as a Zen of Python. Code is more often read than is written. Guidwan Rossum, the creator of Python. When you write code, it is important to keep it readable to yourself and others. A well-written code is a means of communication between a programmer and a computer, a group of programmers, and the same programmer sometime later. If your code is not well written, it may cause some problems and confusions in the long run. And what usually happens is people say, I work on this project alone, I don't need to worry about any readability. And then they come back to it after, for example, a day off, and they just look at it and say, what the hell is this? Did I write that? And spend their precious time getting acquainted with their code all over again. This is not effective at all. But how do you know if your code is considered readable? Well, usually for each programming language there are special documents which define an ideal code style for this exact language. These are called style guides. And they state how you should name variables, modules, use spaces, use operators and much much more. For Python this document is called Pepate. There's a lot of stuff going in this document, so I'll leave the link below on articles about Pepate. So assume you read those articles, you know Pepate. However, sometimes it can be easier to write your code without properly putting spaces everywhere. And that's why we got tools to help you stick to Pepate. These tools are linters and formatters. Linters are things that when you run them, they tell you what's wrong, and formatters are things that just make it all right. There are a bunch of linters like PyCode Style, PyLint, Flakate, and Hacking. And there are also a bunch of formatters like AutoPepate, Yarp, and Black. But most people will say that we shouldn't use those linters because most IDEs and text editors already have those built in them. But the thing is, those linters and formatters don't always tell you everything. Let me show you what I mean. Here we've got four samples of code, ranging from worst to best. I'll go over each of them right now and show you how we should use PEP8 with them, how PEP8 really looks like, and how to use linters and formatters to achieve PEP8. Before we start at all, we need to firstly install Black, PyCode Style and PyLint. These are the formatters and linters we are going to be using. PyLint is a linter, PyCode Style is also a linter, and Black is a formatter. These are three that I use almost always, because they check for different errors and they fix different errors as well. Alright, so let's start from the code. Look at this code. Can you tell me what it does? I think it will be pretty hard for you because it looks pretty bad, like it's it's actually really bad. Because you just don't, under, don't understand what each variable does, right? So let's run PyCode style on it. To run we need to type python minus m PyCode style wait this code. There are a lot of errors, and PyCode style mainly checks for spaces, so as you can see, there are a lot of spaces here, so it says that it's, these are the wrong spaces. Okay, let's run PyLint, and also you need to keep in mind that PyLint is very aggressive, It'll, it's very aggressive because, see, there are a lot of different mistakes, but they are different from PyCode style. And why I chose PyCode style and PyLint to show you, because PyLint only checks for spacing. PyCode style checks for function methods, like for example, the variable name wrong, or here used range len instead of enumerate, where is it, consider using enumerate over here. So uh, these, these two check for different types of errors. And now let me format a file, let me fix it, okay. I'll use black for it, our formatter. See, it's reformatted. See how it looks? It looks much better now. N no different like trailing spaces and white spaces and all of that, you know. But still, we don't understand what our program does because, because like black and formatters do not rename variables. Because if we run PyCode style here, for example, nothing. But if we run PyLint on it, all of the errors remain. So that's not very good. Okay, so uh, that's why 
formatters don't often help you. Okay, let's move on to a better code. This is uh, basically, I forgot, this is the same code as we just like formatted, so this is the same code with all the spaces in them, but still, as I already shown you, PyLin doesn't want that. Okay, let's move on to a good code. Here we've got good code where all the variables are named correct. And now you can see that this function, and by the way, this four modules do exactly the same. They just uh, have different styling in them. And as you can see, every variable tells what it's supposed to, what's supposed to do, what it's supposed to mean. And it's really, really clean and brief. If you run py, py called style for it, on it, for example, how is this code called? It's good code, okay nothing happens. But if you run pylint on it, see, there are not that many errors anymore. That's because mostly most of these errors well regarded for wrong naming of a variable. Here are just uh, some other errors that are really, really hard to hard to train to avoid, but still there, there, there just are other. So that's why PyLint is very aggressive. See here, it tells you consider using enumerate instead of iterating with range and len. PyLint doesn't like when you do that. It does not like that. Because PyLint is so aggressive that it will go and look into each of your function methods and what you do and how you use it. And if something is not right for PyLint, it'll be very, very, very mad. And you can see there are a like three more different problems missing missing module doc string missing function on or method doc, doc string and unused variable j see here unused variable j because we iterate in range now but we do not use j here so we need to get rid of j but how do you get rid of it and how you fix all of the mistakes that pylint just shown us that's why we got excellent code here here there is basically no errors at all. We've got a module doc string, a module that works with strings of letters. We've got a function doc string, gets the number and turns a list of letters with each letter occurring num times in the list. It has comments and it uses enumerate. And as you can see, we've got this underscore here. Why is under underscore? That's because when you don't use a variable, you need to put underscores there because then Python will ignore it. And as you can see, I changed J here to underscore. And uh, now, if I run pylint on this code, perfect, 10 out of 10. And, and what's also cool about pylint is that it gives you the, basically the mark that your code has. So it's very, very, very good. And uh, also, if I run PyCode style on it, I did not run it, but I think you are, you know, that this is gonna give no errors at all. And one more, why don't I encourage you to use formatters like black? Because see, it's the perfect code, it's like, it has everything good in it, you know? But if I run black on it, It'll still do something. It'll change the these things to double. And the thing is, maybe in some like universe it's right, but it's not bad to use normal ones like this. So that's why formatters are not always that good because you need to know what uh, styling like what styling guide does the formatter format to, and what does the formatter do overall with the code. So that's why using a formatter isn't always the best thing. And by the way, if you're on Linux and not on Windows like me, you can just use and you can just use this command. Just Python, black and the code. Because as I can see, I just can't use the I just can't use it on Windows. Alright, that's all I want to show you. So that's all there is to this video. Thanks for watching. 
Don't forget to like, subscribe and comment if you like this type of content. Videos like this take a really long time to make, so it would mean the world to me if you subscribed and clicked the bell as I don't post very often. Have a good day and bye!